Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Europa Universalist 5. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to take a look on your Radeon and Nvidia parameter and at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for NVIDIA. So first of all, download the latest version of your driver. You will have the Europea Universalist 5 featuring the LSS super resolution. Really important to do that. In the graphics section, in the global setting, normally when I do DLSS override, use the latest one. You're going to make sure that you're going to push frame generate reconstruction and super resolution, the latest one. Uh, low latency on, max frame rate if you want to limit your FPS, this is pretty much where you're going to do it. Shader cache size, I like to put 100 gig because I have the space on my disk. If you install a lot of game, 15 and more, it, that can be good to use 10 or 100. The default is 5 gig and uh, you don't need to recreate your shader each time you open your game when you have a lot of in-game installed. In this system, uh, I recommend to use a G-Sync if you have it on your monitor. So on, use full screen and window as you can see on the proper monitor. Resolution, make sure that you're using native and the IS refresh rate. And I like to put a little bit more digital vibrance to have better uh, saturation to my color. I'm using 55. In the performance section, the power maximum, I'm, I'm using 133. Uh, it's going to send more wattage to my card. So I'm getting a longer booster boost clock. I can do 5 to 7% optimization in my FPS. So a pretty nice boost over there. The thing is, you need the room on your card. So if you have a bad, bad card with bad thermals, it will not do anything. So just stay at 100. But if you're playing games and you have like 60 degrees uh, thermals on your GPU, definitely do some testing. Now let's go to Radeon. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings display first make sure that you're using your free sync if you have a monitor compatible with it you're gonna make sure that you're gonna synchronize your gpu with your monitor so really important to use that after that we're gonna go to gaming in the graphics section make sure that you're using the custom profile so don't use those presets over there make sure that you're selecting your gpu in my case it's a 9070 xt don't use your integrate gpu it can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate gpu after that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. 
Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation, and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be... 100% uh, utilization for me, so you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer, but sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed, just go to Assassin's Creed, and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in-game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging. But uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. Now for the settings. So first of all, you have two API available, the X12 and Vulkan. And honestly, they have their own engine and they recommend to use Vulkan. I did some testing with my NVIDIA and Radiant card and Vulkan is the best for me. So definitely use that. Display mode, go full, full screen. Resolution, make sure that you're using native. I don't use VSync because I'm using G-Sync. So if you're using G-Sync and FreeSync, definitely don't use VSync. But honestly, if you don't have that, I recommend you using it. Normally, I always say don't use VSync because it adds input lag. But it, in this game, you don't really care. So definitely use it if you need it. Maximum FPS, I'm not locking my FPS uh, with this. I'm locking it with my NVIDIA software. But again, it's a question of preference. Just do whatever you need. Now for the quality settings, uh, I'm going to show you which one will provide you the most of your FPS. But again, we're not playing Counter-Strike here. Everybody has a different computer. So I'm going to show you what to do. But definitely you can put some stuff higher and maybe some stuff lower also. Map object, I recommend to go with medium. You're going to gain a nice 2% over there. Texture quality, it really depends on the amount of VRAM of your uh, GPU. If you have more than 8 gig ultra, 6 gig high, 4 gig medium, less than 4 gig, go with low. And just follow the same thing with your texture filtering. So if you have ultra here, 16. If you have uh, high, go 8. If you have medium, go 4. And if you have low, go 2. LOD fade, I recommend to deactivate it. Same thing with LOD quality, go with medium. Those two parameters will provide you a nice 4% boost in your FPS. I'm not a fan of the anti-aliasing in this game, so I recommend to go disable or FXAA, a basic anti-aliasing. MSAA is too blurry. And if you have an RTX card, you're going to use it anyway DLSS, so uh, the anti-aliasing will be not apply. Bloom deactivate for better visibility. Screen space, uh, ambient inclusion, dis deactivate this one, a nice 3% boost. Depth of field, better visibility, deactivate. Refraction quality, reflection, go with low. You can gain a nice 5% over there. 
Blur quality disable. Don't use the low uh, quality shader cache. Honestly, it's when you're desperate. It doesn't provide you a, a big boost in your FPS. Shadow quality. This one is tricky. For each bracket, you're gonna save like three to four percent FPS. It's pretty huge, but at disable, the game looks too flat to me. So my recommendation is go with this one. Texture streaming on, texture streaming over there run on. Render scale, just stay at 100%. You don't want to downscale your game. Animate character, you can use that one. Single unit army, I don't check it. Koa resolution, go 64 by 64. Characters, uh, screen space, uh, ambient inclusion, again, deactivate. You, you, the ambient inclusion in this game is pretty uh, strong. You're going to lose a lot of FPS. Multi sampling, go with 4x. Now, if you have an RTX card, definitely use DLSS. Uh, normally, I always recommend to use quality, but in this game, again, you're not playing Valorant or uh, um, Counter Strike. So, uh, at balance, it, it does the job and you get a nice 14% boost in your FPS. So, definitely use that one. UV quality at low and don't check the disable 3D terrain and enable particle also. This one can take your FPS if you have a bad CPU. So make sure this one is deactivated. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.